Hey, welcome, 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 everybody. And we have two fantastic art directors. We got Shira Salong, art director at Moon Active, previously at King and Rovio. And then we got Jack Gilson, art director at Scopely, previously at Wuga and Rovio. How's it going, guys? Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. So yeah, you, dude, really good. It's really good. <laughs> so, so you guys, Jack is joining out of London or the outskirts of London, and Shiraz is, is, in, is in India at the moment. And because my knowledge of India is very limited, I don't know. It's not Mumbai, it's not Delhi, but it's somewhere in between. The Italy of India. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, just on the Tropic of Cancer. Yeah, well, well Shiraz explained it, that it's the, uh, he, he lives in the Italy of, of India. <laughs> Yeah, well, the size of the state is equal in Italy, and also the population. So. How about the uh, how about the uh, the outfits and the style? <laughs> so. Pretty different. Okay, well, <laughs> the food as yeah, well. well. We're getting there. We're getting there for sure. <laughs> but we're not. Yeah. We're not. We're not to talk about the uh, the ge geographical locations, even though that would be a, a really fun topic. Um, we're we're about to talk some something something that I find extremely interesting because I've gone through this so many times, and that is hiring a perfect art director and sadly art director is the role uh, is the person that i had to let go the most and it's the person that i had to hire the most so i'm really trying to figure out and I sh i'm sure a lot of people are trying to figure out how to how to hire art director when to hire an art director where to search for an art director how do you know that the uh the person is the right fit and all of that jazz so before we kick it off let's start with defining the role because in my time I've worked with many different art directors and they have nearly all been juxtaposition of each other, like very, very different. And everybody is an art director. So Shiraz, do you want to kick off and kind of define what you, uh, like how would you define an art director? Yeah. Uh, so th that's entirely true. Like uh, when I was an artist working under different art directors, I myself saw different directors uh, working with me and, uh, they range in all ways, like there might be someone who is uh, probably the best artist among the whole group, uh, very hands-on, and then there are people who might not even have a drawing tablet on their computer. So there's a there's a big difference, like the same people sharing the same title, but uh, very different day-to-day -day work. And my, my definition would go still very uh, generic, which is simply an art director being a person who is responsible for the look of the game. Like uh, the design director is in charge for how fun the game is. The tech director or R&D director is uh, responsible for how well the game plays. The art director is naturally the person who's responsible for the, the look of it, the, the visual vision behind it. Um, and then obviously, whatever they do it still need to fit into the marketability and the gameplay and should work seamlessly with the tech. Uh, and they have to deliver stuff uh, within the resources they have at hand. Uh, however, the core function still depends on how the game is going to look like eventually. Like that's what their responsibility is. And um, coming back to like why you have seen so many of different art directors, I think it comes with the situation of what their past experiences have been, uh, depending on where they work, like what kind of company culture they had. Uh, also, the expectations from the senior leadership. Uh, and it's also like the, the kind of like the culture the people in the team they work with, and probably most importantly, their own individual choices of how they wanted to grow themselves and grow themselves as an artist. Like almost most of the people start as an artist uh, and then slowly over the course, depending on how their trajectory goes across their career, uh, they sometimes like either continue to remain artist or start to lose it. And it's mostly about opening PPTs and talking about stuff or relying on Pinterest and stuff like that. And in, in, in the defense of those people, it's also not always possible to be very hands-on forever. Like uh, you need to have a bird eye view on the project so that you are able to make more bigger impact and make big decisions, which are uh, going to be useful for the project. And also it comes with lots of sacrifices, right? Like you have to dedicate your time into recruitment or uh, talent development, improving pipeline, all that kind of like stuff, like with the schedule and, so sometimes like solving people issues takes a lot of your time. So um, it, it, it comes with a balance and depending on what kind of balance everyone ends up with in their career, it, it defines like what kind of person they are. And also sometimes it's very stupid if you are maybe by 
by just being hands on and not caring about anything else like if you're locking yourself in the room and the team is sitting idle and you just get frustrated and you are starting to just take things on your own hand and um, that can maybe even start to make the team feel a bit disengaged or uh, feel the lack of ownership so someone who is like best with balancing all of those so that they are still inspiring contributing and at the same time giving the team the control and the ownership uh, would be the best art director like you might still have to pick up stone to ignite the fire by rubbing it if it's quite dark but um, whoever is the best team person uh, and can manage the best team is probably a good art director in my opinion. got it so so and, and that's a that's a very good point like it ultimately goes back to the look of the game and then you play around with the tech the marketability the resources those all have effect to it and of course game design has a huge effect on on, on what you're doing because it leads to a certain type of audience and then through that and so forth. Um, Jack, how did you become an art director? Like, let's, let's uh, take a, like a concrete oh example. God, that's, 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 that's a tricky question. Uh, so, I mean, I started, <laughs> I, I started working in, uh, in games back in 2006. Um, and I basically just worked up from junior artist up to art director. Um, and I think, yeah, it, one of the things that you said about being an art director apart from being um, hands-on as well, is that, you know, there's lots of different sort of hats you have to wear as well. Um, and that's one of the things that I always enjoyed at Wooga was wearing lots of different hats. And I think that's what sort of helped me uh, become the person I am as a director. Uh, I've got a good background in tech. I think that's useful to have, really. I'm more tech thinking when it comes to uh, production. Um, also, I've got a creative side. So I think you've got to be, you've got to be creative. You've got to have a tech side to yourself. You've got to be good with people. Um I would say you, you have to be kind of outgoing as well when you're being an art director. It's quite tricky if you're just uh, introverted. It's, I, I find that more difficult to work with people. I had to come out of that shell to become more extroverted to deal with people because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a real people job. You know, you are basically, you know, um, a purveyor of taste for games. Uh, and so, you know, if you've got a vision of this product and how you're going to sell it uh, using visuals, you have to be able to explain yourself and, you know, really – give a good, uh, you know, reasoning behind the direction choice uh, of what you're thinking. Um, so, I mean, uh, as long as, you know, not only have you got to be a decent artist, but you've actually got to be a really good bullshitter as well to be able to sell things, to actually get people talking and you know, get people discussing the kind of thing you're looking for in games. Um, it's, it's, ne it's never as simple as, oh, this is, this is pretty, let's just do this. You've got to really, you know, combat and push for something with a product lead or a general manager or something. And, uh, and that's something I've always really found fun to do is you know, spying with people, discussing ideas, you know, igniting thoughts behind why we should do this. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you want to become an art director, you know, the most important thing to do is make sure that you have a, a, a good round knowledge of all the things, all the all the fields you're going to work in within that product. And I mean, if you're going mobile, you know, you should be more focused on a bit of everything, especially sort of you know the the, the audience you're aiming for. Uh, whereas if it's triple A, you know, it's, it's a bit more different. Uh, there's, it's, there's, there's art directors for different areas in that in that field. Whereas, you know, if you're going to work in mobile, it's definitely more about knowing a lot more things and just focus on characters or art or, or you know, buildings or backgrounds. You've got to know a lot about everything, really. Shiraz, did you always know knew that you want to be an art director? Like, because Jack said, like, he grew up from a junior artist up to an upper art director. Like, was it for you also like the sort of like methodical approach that I'm going to grow to this position and that's why I have to diversify and understand everything. And um, yeah, like, was it, was it something that you were pursuing? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I didn't knew, but uh, I had ambitions towards it. So uh, as I was like, much like how Jack said, started with a junior um, starting to get a bit senior, I started to accept responsibilities and uh, slowly like starting with a smaller team and then taking the lead responsibilities for handling a bigger team. So uh, the, the exact thing which Jack said about uh, wanting to and having to wear different kind of hats, uh, that became the nature of my day to day. And um, I, I started to like more than just being focused on making art, but uh, wanted to be engaged with more things and uh, working with more people, delegating work, giving feedback. Uh, and helping with the talent development and stuff like this with the people around me. So, uh, and also I'm I'm a bit more uh, like vocal. I'm uh, I'm not that introvert uh, in general. So that also helps like being uh, being around and being uh, being among the front runner. Uh, so this is this is something which laid the foundation for me getting into 
being an art lead and then overall becoming a director and then studio art director. I think definitely the right. There is one thing you got to think about when you when you get towards director roles, you do definitely become more hands off when it comes to art. So I mean, if 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 your goal is to be, you know, working on great art, then art director may not be the best role to go for. I mean, there's obviously some art directors that can spend time on just drawing and painting and setting the scene, setting the, the sort of flavor for a, for a game or something. But after that, really, it comes down to paint overs and management. Uh, I think you'll find a lot of art directors will say that and you sort of reverb that back to you as well. They'll echo that. And um, is it is it typical, Jack, that, that, that people want to become an art director? Is it something that, that you're pushed for? Like, no. Or is, is, it, is it more that that there are clear distinction between, let's say, in a tech path, like not everybody wants to be a CTO. There are people who want to be the distinguished en engineers and kind of be like super into their craft and just code amazing things and they'll get rewarded for it. Is it the same on the art team side that you can, you know, become a lead artist or a principal artist and that is equally uh, respected inside the team as the people manager? Yeah, I would say, you know, someone like a principal artist is probably respected more in some ways right because they are just a fantastic artist knocking out beautiful pieces of work whereas the art director is you know, he's, he's the he's the ass that says no no need move more to the left or more blue more green um so i think i i definitely believe that there are people that that i know this for sure actually I don't believe it. i know there's people that want to stay as you know a lead artist or a concept artist um because i mean a concept artist is a really tricky one because that that has such a level of experience from junior to just beyond director of the kind of artists you get who are just a concept artist. And it's not just a concept or role. It's, it's such a, a huge thing. Um, so yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't not respect someone that isn't a concept artist or an art director. I mean, everyone's, everyone you respect everyone just equally really with it. It comes to as, as an art team, you've got to be very, yeah, you've got to be very careful with artists as well. Um, they're, they're, they're tricky people to work with. You know, they, it's, it's, you, you, that's why you got to be good with people is because, you know, you're looking at someone's work and you're critiquing it or you're explaining why it's good or bad or how to improve it. So it's, it's something like trying tread, to tread, tread on eggshells really sometimes when you're sort of, you're an art director. That's one of the things you've got to think about too is, you know, artists can be very, they're very creative, but they're also people that can be very uh, emotional and passionate. So, uh, yeah, you've got to be super careful and, and any, any type of, uh, artists that exist it's, it's the same thing really whether there's an art director art lead junior artist you still got to be just as careful with them too because you know people pour their heart into making a piece of artwork so you got to be very careful with how you sort of you know work with it uh, and so people stay at that role they, they like to stay just painting and i think that's absolutely fantastic they should especially when they're that good yeah that's a that's a good point that that, that you made um regarding giving feedback so <laughs> I've I've had experience not not even once, not even twice, where the the team didn't respect the art director, uh, and then they usually didn't respect the art director because of her or his uh, drawing skills and ability to critique them, and that seems to be I mean that well that has happened so many times where um yeah where where the team just just kind of like revolted against the art director e either by to critical members leaving or or um or just complaining to the gm that that this is not the uh, the right person so shiraz you have a very different background not different background but you have a sort of a, like a typical art director background where you have started from concept artists if i'm correct and you're a visual development artist and through that you're very good at drawing and through that you have a very beautiful portfolio and through that you get a lot of respect from the team of artists that you're working with because you're able to critique them with a pen not with words and and you're able to to explain it because you, you that that's your background like is this mandatory or what are the other ways to to really engage with your team and kind of get that respect uh, even if you're not you know the uh one of the best drawers in the team yeah uh so true i mean it I don't think it's so necessary because there are successful ADs or uh, multiple expertise. Like it could be someone even more specialized with the uh, with the tech art, and then maybe from the from the animation background or actual production, and might not really draw. I think the 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 initial phase of when you're joining the team and when you start with working a new team, especially that team has not been built by you and has been given to you. 
those crucial first few weeks or months are most important that decide how the chemistry between the team and the AD is going to work. And that's where I, I feel that in my own experiences, I found it successful if I'm engaging with everyone differently, because just like Jack said, everyone is quite different and they're all mostly emotional because they, they are being artists, uh, they've been creating content and they put their love into it. The the more one-to-ones you are going to have at the way beginning and when you start to meet people, spend time with them, uh, hear their stories, tell them about your own stories, uh, look at their uh, accomplishments and what they have done in their career, uh, ask them to show their own work, and then maybe even show your own stuff and what you have done. That start to develop a bit of like a respect, mutual respect among both of both the ideas as well as the person, and they start to understand what are uh, the way someone likes and doesn't like. And it, it automatically, as you grow your experience as an AD, you start to discover people and learn about how flexible about are they about your own approach. And then you can probably program your way of working with them according to their own way of dealing with things. Some might not like micromanagement and some others are uh, not careful about details at a certain stage. And you have to be really careful how you communicate about very detailed feedback to someone uh, who's not really looking for those things. Uh, someone else is just wanting to elevate their work and they, they're just very open that, yeah, I mean, you could you could slap on my face about whatever feedback you have because I'm, I'm wanting to improve my quality. So uh, all those learnings really help you choose how you should work with the people and uh, obviously the way you communicate feedback. And I'm very thankful that I worked at organizations where there were lots of coachings done towards um, how to give feedback and sometimes like on a surface level, it felt very weird. Like, what is this plus plus feedback or positive feedback? Like, you always have to cater your sentences in such a way that it doesn't hurt someone. But slowly, I rec uh, started to recognize the values of those. And I, I tried to change my way of uh, uh, dealing with people uh, and, and, and talking with them and then giving them feedback. And also how clear and helpful it is, is also what it needs to be. Like, it can't be too vague that you are just leaving the artist alone. Sometimes you have to be friends with them, like sit with them, um, give a more detailed vision about what you're asking, not just saying that, hey, I didn't like it and go go figure out something else. So uh, that's where it, it, it kind of like builds a relationship, uh, honestly, moving onwards. And uh, that helps dealing with it. And that's something that someone else can do who's not doing drawovers as well. It, it, it's just about framing their mm -hmm. feedback. Jack, how do you get the uh, the respect of the art team other than, you know, wearing a black polo shirt and, and the glasses and, and you know, the, uh, the silly tattoos and all that jazz? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. What, what you know, Shara, Shara says, it's basically, you know, you just have to, you know, work with the artists closely, uh, show them the kind of stuff you've done as well, the kind of vision you're trying to build with them to. to um, and it's just really a case of just... Uh, you know, working with them to show that you're an artist. Uh, and I think that's the most important thing to get respect is to, to be able to, you know, stand on your own two feet and, you know, fight it out with, uh, with other artists, show them, show them what you can do. Um, and I think that's, that's very important, especially with much more, if you join a team, like if you go into a team that's got leads, principals, and you're an art director coming in from the outside, mm -hmm. Uh, like that's what is that what happens to me mostly when I join another team coming into work with another team. There's already you know, an art director or principal artist in there too. Yeah, it's really it's a case of just you know they're already they're already senior, right? So they know exactly the kind of I guess the hoops you've jumped through to get to where you are and the skills you have and the experience you've you've gathered along the way. Um, it's just you know you work with these people to you know to find the vision and along the way they they start to see exactly the kind of person you are and the kind of art you output you create mm -hmm. um and really it's just about being a nice person right about being a nice guy you know don't don't be an asshole just you know i don't think you've met many art directors there. like what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> no, you, honestly at, at the end of the day right just be a nice guy and you'll and you'll you always get on with people and you'll get the you'll get the best work out of them okay all right. Well, I've seen I've seen uh, nice gals and nice guys, and I've seen also not so nice, especially in the role of an art director. And um, and that's that's really the challenging thing that you said. Like you have to earn the respect of your team of artists. 
that is such a challenging thing when you're coming in from the outside and they might have been going towards a different direction. You're coming in and you're trying to sway them to a different direction. And you have to have so much weight and so much support from above in order to do that. And I just, like, even thinking about it. I don't know about that. I'm not sure. (laughs) I I, I think if you go into a new team um, Mm -hmm. and you've been given the, given the, 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 the role to actually pivot the art style in a different direction, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think that's a big deal. I think it's easy to do that kind of stuff as long as you explain to the team what exactly you're doing. I've, I've done this multiple times before where you have to actually pivot the art style or pivot something in a different direction from where you were going. And you just do it with, with just you know good art, you know good metaphors, uh, a good style guide that you're aiming to, to go with. Uh, and basically just as, as much information to really give something background and story. Um, and if you give it some kind of story dialect as well, then, you know, people will start to understand exactly why you're doing this. Mm. Uh, I, I do many guides where it's going through, you know, the transition from you know, left to right, black to white. Uh, and it, it's very simple to do that as long as you do it well, you know, and it's, and it's clear. Sure, so I have to ask you, like, look, pivot in the art style. So you're coming in as a new AD. Do you, what's the best approach? To be the man with a plan or be the man with ears? So basically just sitting down, getting everybody's opinion and, like, what would you think? Giving people context and then pushing the team to make the switch? Or is it more fruitful in a case of a pivot where you just come in and, and really underline the reasons and kind of provide a clear guide? Where, where to head up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good situation. Uh, I think uh, in the beginning, it requires years. Uh, you are new to the company. You don't know what the team has been facing. Uh, they might have had a previous few months where they have already tried the stuff that you are trying to bring on the table. And they are probably like tired of it, like, or, or for whatever situation, things didn't work. And now they are uh, a little more disengaged and demotivated. So in the beginning, it requires to have an ear. Uh, I even like what I try to do is I try to take people on some off sites and uh, maybe like spending the whole one day or two days with them. Um, a new venue where you are just going and doing some sort of team building exercises, uh, especially like if all those people are still not mingling well between each other. And then on the on the top level, it's all fun and like we are having great food and everything. And uh, on the other side, there's also lots of activities done towards where you are trying to understand what has been the history of the project, uh, what they have already tried before, uh, why things are not working according to them, and what do they think uh, could improve and uh, is needed. And they are themselves going to give answers to all those problems that things they have been facing. And uh, if you agree to them and um, you you then whatever pivoting that you are about to do, it could be addressed in such a way that it's kind of like answering and abiding to what they have been already hoping for. Um, And additionally, uh, like exactly what Jack said, like coming with a very clear plan, discussing them with them, uh, trying to feel that, hey, this is going to uh, make this stuff better by uh, such and such references, style guide, uh, notes about what we can improve, uh, maybe even like doing some deconstruction, sitting with the people, looking at the competition and looking at those games and then inspiring each other. Uh, those things really value. Uh, and also it, it calls for a lot of uh, appreciation to those people for their own hard work. Like uh, I oftentimes make sure that I'm not really getting lost in the momentum project and forgetting about praising good work. And uh, I I always make sure that once in a while I'm going to individual direct messages on Slack to people and uh, thanking them for the good work they've been doing, a recent artwork that they created, which look really good. Uh, and also sometimes organizing like a studio showcase or whenever there's a studio update or maybe just an art update per month, uh, taking the entire team and showing around the work that we did in the past, uh, past weeks or past month. Uh, which even didn't make through the final cut because of uh, whatever rejections and multiple options were made, uh, so that the team feels that they are getting recognized for what they have been doing, and they they take your side then, and they start to understand that, yeah, there's someone who cares for us and appreciates good work. Yeah, yeah, I asked it because this kind of applies to design and team leadership as well. Like, I've been in cases where I've, you know, had to pivot the uh, the direction, and, and what I found to be the mistake and kind of my own diminishing trait 
was that I would be the man with the plan and I would be like, let's go, let's go and come in and kind of like explain everything. And, and what it makes others do is they kind of like sit back. And then what happens is like, mm -hmm. you're carrying all the weight and it's really hard to ignite the team to, to support with everything because you've been such a driving force ahead with your own vision without mm -hmm. really hearing everybody and getting everybody along. And now they're just helping you instead yeah. of pushing forward. True. So, so that's why, that's why True. I kind of uh, asked the question. Yeah. W one of the thing I would still add mm -hmm. here is you should not be too sensitive about the, I mean, I, I'm not saying you should not be sensitive about the feelings of people, but if you are able to see problems and you recognize that this is what's failing the project overall and the team overall, mm -hmm. you should have that courage enough to say no to things and then channel them in the right way. Otherwise, you are going to mm -hmm. fail. It's going to be your yes. fault. So you, you have to come out across very strongly with what you feel about it. Best if you're getting support from your leadership, your other peers, from design director to creative and uh, your studio head and product lead. Uh, but if you know that this is the wrong way of how we have been doing things in the past and this is the right way, you need to continue educating for it. And uh, you need to enforce that. Otherwise, if you start to make compromises and your own vision for what you initially brought in and now has starting to change just in order to flow with the river of how people have been doing work, then I don't believe you are going to be able to make enough of difference and you will just uh, be part of the problem. Yeah. 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 The, no, that, that's and, you know, Shiraz is a nice man, but we work together and and you're very insightful. Like when you see that that something is not working, you're like, this person got to go. She got to go or he got to go like it's not going to. And that also allows you to to see like when you bring in and you kind of bring the team together, start talking with everybody, start bringing everybody on board. And there's always going to be a couple of people or one person who's kind of not jumping on board. You leave them off board because you got to go. And that's it. And that's uh, that's also a crucial fact. Like you can't have everybody like you. Eighty percent is the goal. The rest 20. Goodbye. So that, that's my, that's the way I see it. And, and that's, you know, the, that's, uh, that's usually uh 80, 20 rule is, um, is, is good to cool. Anyways, enough about me. Uh, but let's talk about when to hire an art director. What in your opinion would be a good start for the project? Like, let's say we're working on a new game. Is art director the first person you bring in? Is it the person that you can bring in after a concept validation? Is it a person you bring in production or pre-production? Jack, when is the perfect time for art director to step in? I mean, I reckon my, my perfect team would probably be um, start off with an art director to get the vision right, working with the like, product lead or GM, whatever, whoever is in charge, uh, and maybe a couple of concept artists, along with you know, the rest of the team that's needed, like design or UI or whatever, UX, if they're needed to. But just to get the, the fundamental design and sort of flavor of the game, you know, get an art director and a concept artist working on that to start off with. And then, you know, once, you know, that's kind of, uh, it's, I guess, I wouldn't say approved, but once it's, you know, looking like it's going in the right direction for what the, the studio's need is, uh, then bring in someone more like a, a technical art kind of person to start, or a really good technical art sort of person, then start break down exactly what you're going to need to to do this kind of game as well. Um, because I've always found with so many, so many issues with working on games is I've always joined a game, you know, halfway in or a quarter in or something, and yeah, you know, it it feels like the due diligence was, was kind of not done. <laughs> so you're then trying to pick up all the pieces. Oh God, we've got to fix this. Oh God, this doesn't work. We need this person here, and I. I never it's so hard to always have the perfect team from the start i think that's such a, a bummer i think you do need to have your know, not the perfect team but the right team to actually understand what they're going to build and how they're going to build it um because it's the the type of you know so many genres of games over the years um and you see the same problems with every game it's just it never the due diligence is done about how we're going to build a game from scratch correctly. Uh, so, I mean, I would all start off with the art director and a concept artist and the rest of the people they needed to make the, the idea and the sort of the, the visual pass and then start drip feeding in, you know, senior members like a technical artist, uh, maybe an animator or something to then start, you know, once it starts sort of flooding out, when you start to maybe go towards like a, mm -hmm. a vertical slice, you know, have the right people on board. So you can also, plan for how you're going to build this game in the future as well sure yeah. what's your what's your recommendation yeah, uh, yeah uh, uh, i agree to what jack said um but it it also depends on what kind of uh 
team or game team that is. Yeah, right? true. Is it uh, under a bigger company? Like uh, you, you already have stable uh, multiple projects going on, and uh, that's a new prototyping team that you are completely confident that you are going to convert it into a game mm. team, uh, which will move on. Then it makes sense to start investing on senior leadership into that phase. However, if it's a new startup or something like an indie team or a bunch of developers and designer combining themselves and forming to make a team and uh, some very initial funding, uh, maybe an art director coming at that point of time might not really bring a lot of value, in my opinion, uh, unless someone is really a generalist and is able to contribute at that very early phase of development when you have to do rapid prototyping and you are providing placeholder research and um, buying some stuff from the store and talking with the game designer and programmers and then just making something functional so that you are able to uh, take it forward. Um, so, so that kind of like generalist would probably bring more influence and uh, uh, things on the get-go. Uh, and then also one of the things which I am always very careful about is that at the early phase, if you give a big responsibility to someone, thinking about, yeah, we formed a small team, let's make this guy an art director because he had been making placeholder assets and all of that kind of thing. But you need to think that afterward, this is going to get greenlit and then there will be more funding and this, the demands are gonna change on the art. Today, it was just about providing placeholders and something temporary working. Tomorrow, it's about elevating the whole benchmark quality and scaling the team and managing and focusing on details like visual development and quality of concept art and everything. Is that person appropriate to continue to be an art director? So I wouldn't put a hat on that person almost immediately until like we, we really know that that person, him or her, is able to continue with the, with the demands which are going to come in the future. So still an AD can come at that stage, but I would probably put it at the point when the project is greenlit. And now the moment is when you are building the team and your, your focus is coming to defining the style, choosing the theme and hiring the first few people like just Jack said, like mm -hmm. tech artist and concept artist and one animator. And that's probably the most enjoyable phase for someone as well. Like uh, the early phases when you are developing style guides and defining the look of it. Yeah, those are, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, great chairs. Yeah, one more thing which I was uh, just feeling like is that it also depends on your channel work. Like sometimes your game is quite inspired, like you're not going to innovate anything. You, you just know that there are these games which exist in the market. We are following something from here. We're bragging that from the other side. That's where also an AD can help by coming in early because then the game developers and designers entirely know what they need to do and they're going to make their game pitch according to it. And you as an AD can start making some sort of like a visual pitch. So it, it comes with all of that PPT uh, with great inspiration on what kind of look you are going to promise for the game. And that deck combined with the, the functional build can be a good like pitch for the investors mm -hmm. to start putting money into it. Great points. Uh, so um, I don't know even which order I'll start with this. So one was what you said. You bring in a relatively, not junior, but but an artist in the beginning, and that is a pretty generalist artist, and he, he or she does a good work in the beginning and then maybe gets a, another helping hand and kind of manages one person. That person is still not an art director. That was a field promotion, and I've usually seen careers sidelined by these type of decisions uh, because at some point when, when shit gets real and – when the person has to be doing real art direction job with and hiring a big team and not, not even a big team, even a medium sized team and then searching into, into like moving into different avenues and also uh, coaching people. That's not why they were in that position originally. They were doing something totally different. And if you still keep that person as an art director and kind of expect that person to grow on the job into multiple different vectors at the same time without any kind of a mentorship, that person's career will be sidelined. And there, it's so many times that I would come to a studio and, and see people with an art director title and like, how did you become an art director? Like you've barely worked on a, as an artist before. Like you were a, a 3D artist for, for a while and now you're an art director. And then you can clearly see in the game that there's multiple things failing. You can see in the team that the multiple things are failing because the person is just not qualified to, to hire, to mentor, to build an art team, doesn't even have an idea of what an art team would do. So. I would just um, kind of to, to everybody who is running teams and studios, be very cautious before giving this title because it's not a reward. It's a punishment for those people. And they could have grown to be a very good art director, 
but because you expedite their progress, their confidence might be shut forever. And the only way go, to go is to go backwards in their career, and that never looks good. So <laughs> that's, that's one point that I've seen in, in these field prom promotions go. Uh, the second thing is the start of the project. So I, I agree with all of you, and I've had multiple different starts for the project. My favorite one is to start the project with an art director who is hands-on. Like if you have an art director that is who started off as a concept artist his or her career, uh, they're able to start drawing, start guiding external artists to kind of go for different looks and feels. And it's good to have that person from the beginning because you're jiving with him or her, and that person is also jiving with your initial tech team. But I would do a caveat that you don't need an art director in the beginning, even at a big company, if the person is wrong. Because what can happen is they hire too big of a team from the beginning, they start managing the team. Meanwhile, you're trying to prove out the core concept of it. So in my experience, I've actually had, I have actually had a good experience of no artists for months while in development while just purchasing assets from Unity Store yeah. or Unreal Store and having the demo just playable with placeholder assets and then bring in art team in one swoop, like the art director with four or five artists at the same time. And what they enjoyed it, they came and they're like, oh, we see the proportions, we see everything, we can take the build in our hand, we can start skinning this the way we want to do and, and we don't have to be worried about multiple different pivots to the core and what's going to happen, what's the angle, what's this, what's that. Like everything is already set, but nothing has been painted. So for them, uh, I remember they said, like, this is, a, this is the best type of a start to a project. You already figured out what the game feels like. Let us figure out how it looks like. That does sound a bit like, though, when a director uses the music mm -hmm. from another film. <laughs> and then they ask the composer to make the music and it sounds just like the music from the other film. So, I mean, there is that issue as well. If you give, if you give a team too much of a template to work from, they literally, as you said, they just paint over it and then yeah. fill in the gaps. I mean, that can work, right? That, that can work. If that's what you're after, for sure. But if you're after something that maybe is more fresh and new, maybe that, maybe that, but I mean, fresh and new, who wants fresh and new these days anyway? It's all about just copying what exists. <laughs> <laughs> It's so it's fresh and new. No, I, Jack, I didn't mean that. I said <laughs> both of the things have worked. And I said, of course, my, 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 you know, preferred way is to start with an art director and yeah, yeah, yeah. make that as a core. But I've also just saying for the smaller studios out there listening, you can actually ship a game and make it a good game without, yeah. without having a single artist for a long while. But that also works in a certain games where you're trying to prove a core. Maybe your core is a little bit different. My experience was with building a different type of a core that we knew that we have to just prototype a lot because this hasn't been really done before. And it wasn't really about the art style. It's like, how do we even make this core work, this idea? Yeah. So having an artist would, would mm. maybe even limit us to some way by pushing to certain direction because how can you develop characters when you don't even know what angle we'll be looking at? And then so forth. I mean I don't, I don't know if, the, uh, Shiraz, you might say it's completely wrong, but you know, yeah. I don't think art is a thing that makes a game, right? That it helps to add the layers mm -hmm. of a game to make, to give it the complexity that the, the, the gloss is to shine that makes it look good. If the game is fundamentally crap, it's not going to be any good to play, right? So mm -hmm. I think that that process is always very good. You don't actually potentially need an art team at the beginning. You can literally, the Unity Asset Store, for example, is fantastic for stuff. Fantastic. You know, I've done that in the past, you know, built stuff yeah. with just those and then basically painted over it as they copied it and <laughs> done, gone over that, you know, and it, it works. It does work. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So we talked about when to hire an art director. So what's, uh, now that we have the when, and there's no one right or wrong uh, opinion here. And that's why I like having both of you here. Um, what's a good source to find an art director, you know, other than, I don't even know where to find it. Like, <laughs> like what, where do you start looking? I mean, I, I would check contacts first. Uh, yeah, you have a lot of people in the past uh, who were like good seniors or good juniors. And that was like 10 years ago. Uh, and they were solid then. You can look at the back now and see how they've improved or what they're up to nowadays. Um, friends, friends are always good. Friends and colleagues, man. That's that, That's really, that's the guys that I go to first. Um, for, for any, if anyone's ever looking for an art director or technical artist, I always go through the basically the sort of the Rolodex. <laughs> Find a couple of artists or tech, A's, tech, tech guys and send them over to friends. Uh, I think that's because, you, as I said, right, if you know these people and you know they're good people to work with as well, um, it's 
it's a clear it's a clear win i mean that's why directors use the same you know actors again because that you know these people are solid and good at what they at what they do um so yeah otherwise if you're if you're you know if you're like a person that's on the outside um looking for yeah an art director obviously you've got recruiters but yeah uh but art stations always quite a good place to just start looking through things um or speaking to people at uh you know at yeah, you know, if you're looking for junior artists or you know just artists, another good place to look at would be sort of you know universities um, and uh, reaching out to campuses and stuff to find out more about the, uh, if they have any people that they can recommend too. Share us what what's what would you be your suggestion? Yeah, so uh, Jack already said about referrals and uh, recruiters. I think on on top of it, there are uh, maybe uh, and apart from the universities thing. Um, I think uh, if you don't have much of contacts, for example, and uh, maybe can't have the support from recruiters at the moment, uh, you can also keep an eye on uh, the art forums, like for example, Art Station, where most of the artists have their portfolio and our directors are constantly pushing stuff about their own direction uh, that they did on previous projects. And you can look at their posts to see like what kind of way they have directed the project before and how they pushed the quality or whatever game they were worked on. And also maybe like keeping an eye on conferences uh, and like GDC or any art conventions and uh, things oriented to digital art uh, and looking at speakers there. Uh, some some of them are presenting their own case studies and their processes and giving talks. And if, if you start to feel that, yeah, these people are singing the same song of the kind of culture I'm trying to bring, uh, then maybe reaching out to those people and then... Uh, oh, sure. You just limited in. the... Uh... The, the people going to GDC, <laughs> the art directors are not going to get approved. <laughs> They're like, wait, companies are looking at who's talking and listening to them and actually trying to poach them. <laughs> oh, well, there are a lot of round table as well. So I, I, I know that there are the, the sessions are fewer, of course, but uh, at the same time, there are lots of like side, side activities around GDC, yeah. uh, art round tables and stuff where there, there's a group discussions and yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, I, I, just, I think conferences are good. Like Trojan Horse is great. When I went there, the first time I went there was True. 2013, and that was a really good place to meet artists. Mm-hmm. It was really, really good. So, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's also a good start. Actually, meeting someone, talking to them face to face, looking at their portfolio, look at, watching them talk if they're talking as well. That's always, yeah, super, super stuff to do. I've hired a lot of people off from the bar. That's, that's yeah, yeah, you have. I even, I, even, I sometimes forgot, but we were at the uh, the anecdote. We this week we were in a in a little bit of an offside thing uh, with other companies, uh, other startups, and um, and some of the uh, the new founders actually said, like, "Yeah, I remember when I first met you. You came in with a bunch of drinks. You gave me some. Then you put a hand around me and showed me a game you were working on and said, "Come work with me." <laughs> like, <laughs> there's on this table yeah, <laughs> from this experience. So. Let's put it this way. Can I go? I'm not an artist. Surprise. I'm not an artist. <laughs> Caveat for everybody. Can I go to, to Troy and Horse is a unicorn, which sounds like a preposterous name, but can I go to this conference and just get people drinks and be like, hey, I loved your talk, really like your visual development. Listen, I'm working on this game. It's super cool. I'd love for you to join and build an art team. Can I do that? Why not? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, Jack, if I can. No, fine, that's, that's uh, it, why not? That's uh, it. Uh, 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 obviously, at THU, I think uh, it, it at least builds a platform where recruiters can connect mm-hmm. with, uh, with the people they can hire. Um, there's a dedicated days for recruitment, and uh, if you can go as a recruiter, great, so you can also set up a table and people are going to apply to you. Um, otherwise, as well, the culture is like that, that people are allowed to meet and talk, and uh, after the whole day of session, uh, there is literally like a bar or food food area and people are talking and obviously there are a lot of people looking for jobs and um, if you're a recruiter and you're going to start talking to people, they're going to say yes. I'm, I'm going. Where's the next one? Portugal? Yes. Yeah, it's happening next Let's one. Let's go. <laughs> I'll bring my drink card. <laughs> I don't need a, I don't need a, a table. Actually, I'll do. I'll do my. Like everybody else can have a, a table, table a bar, outside. Need. I'll have my table in the bar. <laughs> yeah. Come work for me. Just just give me free caps. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a alcoholic, non-alcoholic drink. Whatever's your jazz. <laughs> but as long as you're good at art. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, how do you test an art director? Like, if you don't have an artist 
in on your team, let's say you're you're building out a studio, and we're not talking about like you're no resource studio. Let's say you have resources, like let's say, well, uh, latest example, Aristocrat just initiated a studio or started a studio here in Helsinki. Aristocrat has all the money, and now they put in two guys, like hey guys, build a studio. All right, how do they find an art director? Other than uh, sorry, sorry, uh, we talked about how they find an art director, but. How do they test when they find those art directors, when they get the resumes and the art director will be like, yeah, I heard you guys have a lot of money. I like your vision. Uh, I want to be an art director on your team. How do I test that person if I don't have existing artists on my team? Mm. Um, so I, I can yeah. go first. Yeah, yeah, do it. Do it. Uh, I, I, I think what you could do is maybe you can start asking their strategy of how, how they approach art, uh, how they approach art direction uh, for their team and what's their way of working. The work style, like, um, are they curious about the market? They are constantly studying competition. What's their um, the standard of quality and leadership skills? Obviously, these are part of general interviews, which you generally do with any kind of person. Um, apart from it, sometimes, like, the portfolio also tells a lot. Uh, like, uh, honestly, like, for an artist, the entire portfolio is the kind of art they create and the beautiful work that they've done in the past. And for an art director, it's uh, it's a bit of a different. However, an AD can probably also bring lots of their own uh, set of documents that define the vision. Like um, if they uh, they made some mood boards before, or maybe like the style guide that they've done, done in the past. Even the smallest of post-it that they might have done in their past work, where they gave a feedback to someone with a draw or note or whatsoever. Um, when an AD clubs them together and present them their portfolio, uh, you. By looking at it, you can kind of like imagine that, yeah, this, this person is making sense. And um, I'm able to see from what they started on and then where they took the product by uh, bringing their own things into it. So um, and, and you have seen that in my case, right? Like when, when I met you and when I was giving an interview with you, uh, apart from just bringing the finished pieces or the quality pieces, which I've done in the past, I, I brought those um, those bigger pages where there were like my own writings and uh, the do's and don'ts and all of that kind of that thing. And that sometimes help the, the other person understand about uh, how you make difference. Uh, so that's also one thing. And in addition, if, if you are capable of providing an art test to someone, uh, you could maybe even give them a situation which is a, a real challenge on your own project uh, and then ask them to come up with something like uh, what would be their plan? Like how would they execute this? Uh, would it be about building the team? How would what kind of team composition would they come up with? Uh, what would be their uh, mood board or vision for the thing that you are trying to get created? And in that two or three days of the weekend spent by the art director and and the thing that they create for you as an artist, uh, that can tell you whether yeah this is this is exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Jack, that's super tricky. Uh, right. I mean, you, you got to think about who the interviews are as well first. Like, do they have a back? Do they even understand? I mean, are they just business people, or are they? Do they have let's some kind say, of background in games? Let's say as well? no. Let's 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 give let's. That will be the most horrible situation. Uh, but let's so say they're just they, business. They should probably just maybe get a friend of an art director to do the interviews or, or do the sort of research yeah, for them. Well, let's I think say they're not business. Let's say they have like a product or design background. All right, that's 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 good then. So I mean, I I think. If they're looking at this person as the first person in the studios with an art background, um, I would imagine they're thinking about someone that is potentially more management with some hands-on as well, because they've got to build up a team for the whole yeah. studio at some point. So they've got to think about the artists that they're looking for, their art directors they've got to hire as well, post this art director. It's got to be looking for creative people, technical people, uh, so this person has got to be really good with paperwork. <laughs> they're really good with people. Uh, they've got to, they've got to have a good eye for you know uh, for the style of games that the studio are planning to make. So they've got to have this art director's got to have a business understanding of the of the business itself, right? He's got to be a person, or he she has got to be a person that understands exactly the kind of games that aristocrat make, and also have a knowledge of that kind of product. Mm. Um, so I mean, I think you know the first person they're looking for is someone that's going to be a the flag carrier for the rest of the art team they bring in. This mm -hmm. person would not necessarily have to be the most creative, but definitely the most management orientated person with a very solid background in the business and the games they're going to produce. 
Mm. I'll give uh, I'll give uh, my my example of how I've approached this hiring. So the, uh, the 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 context is always that you have to hire, as you said, flag carrier or flagship. That person has to be um, the one that that attracts other artists. So what I've usually done is is two things. I like to test on what Shira said the plan. I want to know what the plan is, uh, how many people, when, why, and so forth to kind of see how the person is able to plan because as somebody who's in charge of the budget and in charge of the project, I need to be able to trust the person's plan and support their planning. So I need to test how well they plan. Uh, and that's how they break down. And like, I would hire these people here and this people there, this will be my starting team. And then I would be doing this, I'll be doing that. And that leads to a very fruitful discussions between the art director and the GM, where you can actually discuss about headcounts and, and, and mm -hmm. timing. The second thing that I use, that I look in an, in an art director, in the first art director, is their art station presence. Uh, because if you're trying, yeah, yeah. To, trying to hire somebody who will bring others, then you need to somebody who can, who's you know, who has a lot of followers in art station, has reach, who has a yeah, who has the reach, who has the portfolio. Because when they come in and they plant their flag. Uh, other artists will come in because they see their portfolio. They want to work with this person because they know, but by working with this person, they will make their portfolio look better. They don't even care about that much about the game, about the company, but they know that their portfolio will be leveled up after working with this person. And that will move them ahead in their career and they will learn a lot of things. So those are the kind of like two things. And my suggestion to, uh, to all the um, the uh, the heads of studios at this point is to overpay for your art director. Do not do not try to count pennies here when you're hiring your your flag bearer. If your company doesn't have the big name and you, if you don't have the uh, the the art, the art directors, like you will save so much money by overpaying to your art director who is a, who is an art station rock star uh, because that person will bring you all the artists. Every time you hire an artist through a recruiter, that's 15 to 30K a pop to a recruiter. Think about it. And if mm. you hire a great art director who has art station presence, and that person brings you five, six artists just through their resume, that's 15 to 30K a pop per artist. So pay the man or pay the woman, and, and, and you'll save money. So that's, uh, that's my kind of like a financial advice. I'm sure yeah. you guys would agree with that one. <laughs> I agree to a certain level. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yes. So what are the sort of common mistakes when you're hiring an art director? Um, I could go. 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 <laughs> uh, all right. Um, common mistakes. All right. So I, I think three, two, two or three things are important. Like, first of all, it's about if you have a kind of culture in your company and how fit are they for, for that kind of culture, um, how comfortable are they with working with big teams or small teams? So generally when you're interviewing someone, you could kind of like get to know about what's their preference. Like they, they are comfortable working on a small team or they like to have a bigger team where they're specialist in everything. And if the environment requires someone to lead by an example, so that, that would be one. Uh, the other thing is mostly about their own work style compared to the mindset of game development within the entire team. I'm not talking about artists, like everyone, the designers, the developer, how, how they take the product, because everyone have a very different mindset of how the games are being developed. Uh, some might have a very iterative approach, like we start from something quite crappy and we improvise and improvise and improvise. And afterwards, like from all our learnings, we are going to polish and polish. And that definitely also happens with uh, a very vision project as well. But sometimes it's very iterative. And in the other cases, it's a big trust on quality from the very beginning. Like you are, you are just delivering perfection from the beginning and you have that approach that, yeah, we know what we want to make and we are going to make that perfection from the very beginning. So depending on the style, because if, if you are not iterative and you come with a mindset of, I'm going to deliver perfection, then you start to focus too much onto the, the, the quality and perfection at the first benchmarks. And maybe that's a misfit for the rest of the team and how they are comfortable to working it. Uh, and it, it also works the other way around where you just want to throw in some random stuff so that like see how we polish and polish because your vision has been always that this product will become great one year afterwards. However, the rest of the team is focused on building great looking work from the very beginning. Then again, um, you, you're probably a mismatch. And 
the, the, the third thing would be the the main product need compared to your own specialization. So if the product requires you to be, um, uh, the product have all different needs, right? Some of those might have be very heavy on visual development. Something else might require a lot of animation, uh, maybe a lot of VFX as well. Uh, the other ones might require story and emotion and all of that kind of like thing. So if your expertise is not aligned to this and you, you have a different expertise, then again, like uh, you are hiring a wrong art director. So if you are really looking for someone which is very uh, content heavy and visual quality and that kind of like thing, then you should go for an art director who's more expert on the biz dev side. And then same applies for the other stuff like uh, animations and other things, mm. probably. Yeah, I agree totally. Um, yeah. Just make sure you hire the, the AD that's right for what you're after, the role, the, the, the sort of the game you're making, essentially. Um, don't, don't just hire an art director because they're an art director or just because they're experienced. You know, sometimes a more junior AD is sometimes actually better, I find, uh, for, for certain things because they, they're just newer, fresher, hungrier. Um, and, yeah, just the common mistake is hiring an AD that doesn't really understand the kind of uh, product you're going to make. Uh, or hiring an AD from out of the field, uh, so someone from you know Triple A because they're superstar making characters. You bring them into a mobile game, they're gonna be like, oh god, <laughs> you know we're not making these you know mm -hmm. fifty thousand triangle characters. We're making you know five thousand for example. It's, it's no characters five thousand anymore, but you know what I mean. It's like yeah. you, you need to make sure they actually understand that the the role and what they're gonna be uh, delivering on the platform. Yeah, th those those are great points. Uh, from my perspective, like the the, the mistakes have definitely been around the past of the the art director so kind of looking at their previous projects and a lot of like there there are a lot of art directors who um who kind of fake their past so they might not be that hands on on, on multiple different things they might not even show that, that these elements that they are portraying in their portfolio have been done by somebody else um, sometimes even in a, a different studio than, than what they were leading, uh, just an outsourcing studio. So those are, are quite challenging. And and um, you just have to be very careful. And as Jack, as you said, like looking at somebody's background and let's say they've been at like, you know, Supercell or you name it, mm -hmm. like any of these top mobile companies, doesn't make it necessarily that they're going to crush it at your company. Not mm -hmm. at all. Exactly. Uh, you yeah. have to understand how they work, where those came in through. So so don't be blown away when you see images from, from top mm. growth in games because there's there's a story behind them. And and um, you have to understand what was the role of the art director in making that happen. And I'm not saying that that it's that it's bad that the that the art director did draw some kind of a key art themselves. No, that's they're they're not expected to do key art. Uh, but they have to but be I mean, very if, open if, in how it if was. If they didn't achieved. mention it though. If they never yeah. mentioned they did that, if, they, if they're like, yeah, yeah, I did that, and they don't yeah. say it was a team effort, you know, I directed it, and they don't, I think that's that's the most annoying sort of director that exists, is one that takes all the credit, that's mm -hmm. someone you don't want on your team. Yeah, yeah, and then it's, it's definitely, um, yeah, sometimes the uh, the team effort is has been so gigantic when, when, <laughs> yeah, like, when you take <laughs> one person of the team, who was like the manager of that team, and there were like 10 people doing this one thing, and you said, and you're like taking one person. So it's just like taking, I don't know, the person who textured it. It's like, <laughs> he's not going to be able to redo it. He just did a piece of it. So, so, um, and if the art director says like, Hey, there was a 10 people and I can bring pretty much, I can rebuild this team composure and make this type of stuff. That's great. But all I'm trying to say to everybody who's hiring art director is just to be very clear when you're asking questions about their portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, how were these things done? Who was Definitely. responsible for this? And and may, all, a lot of time in our station, you will see uh, people tagging like, okay, the uh, the concept was done by this, yeah. the 3D was done by that, the animation was done by this. And when I look at it, I'm like, okay, that's great. Uh, I can see your team forming up already. So <laughs> so that's positive to me rather than yeah. saying, you know, like I directed this. Okay, with how many people? External, mm -hmm. internal, what was going on here? So yeah. that's always a, a, a challenging. All right. Um, before we, before I let you guys go, I want to talk about one more topic, and that is the common pitfalls of an art director. And this is something that I've ha sadly had to, you know, as I said in the beginning, I've, I've had to witness where the art direction, art directors fail in their position. So I'm kind of curious to hear from your perspective. As like we, we talked about how to succeed, 
but what are the typical fails and how do you help in, in the role of an executive or a, or a studio head or a teammate or another lead in the, in the company to, to help the art director to course correct. And, um, yeah, like what, what are the, what are the typical fails and how to help them to course correct? I mean, I think, you know, it's kind of, which is quite good actually where you come from the last, the last topic is that, you know, if, art directors come to you with this fantastic portfolio and it's like beautifully dazzling, but then you find out they just did one thing on it, which was they painted one character or something that, and they tried to then continue to hide this and then do all your work. And then basically start doing your visual style guides and art guides, all this kind of thing based on uh, a lack of knowledge. Um, the biggest pit for an art director you can make is not asking for help or getting the right people to help them at, at the right time. If they try to do everything themselves and they don't have the knowledge for it, that's, that's, I've seen that happen so many times with, with teams. Uh, you know, you've got a, a cracking person as an art director, but they just have lack of knowledge in, I don't know, maybe characters or a, a lack of knowledge in, I don't know, color theory. And uh, this can create so many, many issues, you know, uh, I think that's the problem. If, if an art director doesn't come across to someone that knows when to ask for help or know when to get the right people in, that's a huge pitfall. That's my first thought on that. I'm sure mm -hmm. Shiraj has a few, a few others. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I think in order to help them, like the, I'm probably this part of the your second question where how, how do you help them like course correct? Um, maybe what you could start doing is like spending more time with them, understanding their own ideas and vision on how they want to operate, like uh, uh, what's their ideal way of working. And um, in case you see that uh, there are certain pitfalls, like for example, there's too much of workload, like so many, like the art director is getting overwhelmed because of so much of things not working. Uh, one of the things that one could do is to give them maybe an art producer, mm. and that could be a really good thing. Like you, uh, the art director now has a dedicated art producer who is helping him or her uh, manage the whole week. Like, and it's not just about the work uh, going to the artist, but also the tasks that are at hand of the art director, yeah. which he or she might be forgetting quite often. And the the art producer is gently reminding about, hey, we this week we had to make a list of all the outsourcing vendors we could reach out. Next week we have to have a call with certain person in order to uh, see whether they can create this key art for us. So things like it. And also um, maybe if you're if, if there are sprints going on and there are like retrospectives done, uh, you could look at all those retro notes from the art and try to hear what the artists have been feeling and what are the, the things that they feel are not working and then talk with your art director and like bring it up like, hey, I saw the retro notes and um, I saw that lots of artists have been complaining about this. Like, do we need any help? Like, what do we do about this? And then uh, supporting that art director. I think these are the areas where you can probably help course correct uh, and fix the problems that are happening at the moment. Yeah, getting overwhelmed by the amount of work they have to do and other stuff's getting forgotten about. Like as you said, an art producer, you can you can forget about time. You know, if you're just painting pretty pictures, uh, and you need someone to help you make sure that the that the whole team is working, uh, you know, like, like clockwork, not just you are just the one person doing everything. Also, another thing is the micromanager. That's a huge pitfall where the art lead or the art director has to take every piece himself and paint over it. I mean, that's that's super annoying as well. If someone if he's having to take if he's the basically a blocker for your product as well, uh, that's that's a huge issue you have to come across and get rid of as well. Yeah, that's it's it's really important as a as a as a manager for the art director that in your weekly or biweekly one on ones you just keep asking them how can I help you. And yeah. of course, it's uh, it's also mm. important to have talks with everybody in the team so you understand the issues. And usually, what I try mm. to understand is does the art director understand that he or she needs help because I usually understand that things are not working out. Production is, yeah. is re either halted or there's a, there's a little bit of a turmoil in the team. One or two people might be leaving the team on the art side. Like these are all red flags. And at that point, I, I expect the art director to tell me what the help is. And if that doesn't happen, then it's a wrong art director. And then the then you need to be thinking about contingency plans for that. So so it's usually like yeah that's that's kind of like my thought process always. It's like if the art director continues to have a plan that you can support, that's excellent. And for that they need to understand what's going on. But if they lose their plan, then then I don't know how to help an art director to to get the plan again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, one of the things which I also feel are often uh, quite common and probably like the the wrongdoings of uh, when you're working as an art director mm-hmm. is favoritism. Yeah. When you start to favorite a certain people among the team and uh, maybe that person is the one that you hired or you might have known from the past and therefore you have that relationship with that person and you are constantly just relying on that person for most mm-hmm. of the communication or giving the main roles and sidelining the entire team because then maybe the person you're favoriting might be overperforming or being 200%, but you have to realize that all the other people in the team are feeling disengaged or unconnected with you and starting to feel a bit more inferior, like the, the art director doesn't like me and uh, they never reach out to me for good work and I'm always given the the most basic assignments compared to most challenging and the exciting one where I can also grow. So my growth is tampered, my impact on the project is tampered, and they start to... Uh, just treat it like a job and they, they don't feel excited about working on it. So their productivity goes down from 100% to 60%. And eventually that makes the whole team balance becomes unstable. So I, I don't really feel like doing favoritism in this. It's very common because mm-hmm. uh, you always spot good artists and you like their work and you prefer them to do stuff because you know that uh, it will eventually look good, but it, it kills the team balance. And that's something which leads to the failure of an art director as well. Yeah, uh, the the problem with that is in most of the companies, the art director, like if you consider it, it's it's um it's a team leadership job, and they don't have full ownership of their team, meaning they can't change their team. It's like you have to win with this team, and it's and it's a it's a it's a very weird proposition because if you can't make any changes to the team composure, then how? How can you win? Like, are you some kind of a cult leader where you can get everybody behind whatever you're doing? Like, I'm, I'm sure those type of people exist, but most of the time you're in a rush. You, you have some kind of a pressure to execute. And I understand that this type of favoritism happens because you, you happen to have people you trust on your team. And what that signals to me is you have people who you don't trust on your team. And that itself is an issue. Like, how can you have members on your team that you can't get assigned you know, legit tasks to because you know that they won't be able to deliver. And of course we can have a discussion whether you tried or so forth. And you could say, just, you know what? They don't just don't have the skills. It's like, okay, so what, why do we have this person on this team if you don't trust? Mm -hmm. And then through that, it creates this sort of a, like a bad feeling inside the team where there's an A class players and B class players, because you're unable to, to move them. And then the B, B class players, not, they're not B class forever, but what is happening is they are unable to grow and their confidence is going down because you know they're not getting the support. So it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the art director. It's not good for the for the people who are unable to progress because they're not being trusted uh, because maybe the pace of the project is so far along or the style of the new art director is different than what they're comfortable with. So what I'm trying to say is art directors need to have full control on who's on their team if you want them to have the ownership of the outcome of the of the, of totally. the result. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. Jack, you were saying something? Yeah, I, I agree. That's, that's, a, that's a very valid, mm. valid uh, advice. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky because you do get, you know, there are some people on the team that are, are better than others and you, yeah. you do rely on it a bit further. And I guess that, that could be seen as favoritism. Um, <laughs> I, I'm kind of laughing because there there have been situations where, where we laugh later on with, with some of the art directors that joined my team later on. They were talking about their previous project where they were given just absolute juniors to complete very di- difficult tasks. And yeah. the executive would say, well, your goal is to level them up. And he's like, what? Mm. Like, that's not like you can't teach somebody to be a senior during a project. And and it was just like it, in in, the, in these situations, I know that they felt it to be so completely unfair. It was the same thing as you would give the executive some junior people to complete their job and just say, "Well, just level them up while you're running." And um, yeah, anyways, uh, those are funny scenarios. Not going to mention any companies. So before I start talking more shit, I think it's time to end this podcast with with giving you guys the floor. So. Please promote the open positions at Scopely, at Moon Active, promote your Instagram, your art station, and tell people how they can get in touch with you apart from going to Trojan Horse is a Unicorn conference and buying you drinks. THU. THU. That's, 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 that's I just like to say it. the full name because it's so okay. preposterous. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, yeah, Scopely Door's got roles open for good artists and just check out LinkedIn uh, and you can find out all our available roles on there. Um, I, I was on this podcast today not speaking on behalf of Scopely, just myself. These are all my personal <laughs> opinions. Just as a, a caveat right there, just uh, so a, a quick note at the end, just in case. Um, and you can find my stuff. I'm, I'm an art station. Just type in Jack M. Gilson and you'll find my beautiful amount of uh, artwork from stuff I've worked on in the past. Uh, and hopefully going to be working on some NFT stuff very soon as well. Ooh, descriptions. It, it's the, uh, the link is going to be in description. And Shiraz, you got multiple channels to reach out to. Yeah, so uh, you can search for my name, my name like Shiraz Talan, uh, on Astration. It's basically astration.com slash Shiraz or Instagram.com slash Shiraz. However, I manage my website more than these channels. So it's Shiraz.com or Shiraz Talan.com. And it also has the link to my email address and LinkedIn profile. So if someone need to reach out, they can reach out by email and I'm happy to talk about anything on uh, whatever uh, they need support on. Um, additionally, uh, at Moon Active, so, well, we, we are always hiring. Uh, we are always looking for good people. Definitely there's a career page where we post uh, the pressing job positions, but uh, honestly, we are open for all kinds of profiles depending on uh, whenever someone wants to reach out to us. And we are always looking. So um, our pipeline is also quite uh, expert driven. So we have very much like a film pipeline where we have uh, color key artists and layout artists and um, dedicated character designers and uh, um, that kind of like people. So uh, pretty much open for people even working in the animation industry and films and stuff and definitely in games. So um, yeah, all profiles are open and anyone can reach out to me directly as well. And uh, if they seem fitting to Moon Active, we'll definitely consider that. And Scopely has multiple studios everywhere, and Moon Active is fully remote, correct? Uh, well, we have also an office uh, where people go in Tel Aviv uh, and mm -hmm. also in London. But um, other than that, like there are lots of artists who are working remotely from um, all around the mm -hmm. globe. So if you want to be, if you want to work at Moon Active and live in Bali, that's totally possible. <laughs> you just have to be <laughs> really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was probably the uh, the best advertisement for Moon Active Arts jobs ever. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, powerful Jack Gilson, powerful Shios Talang, connect with these guys. I can personally recommend working with with uh, with both of you guys, and um, it was a pleasure. And we shall talk offline. Everybody who listened, thank you. Hope this was helpful. Actually, I know this was helpful. If you carried through this. Now you know how to hire an art director. You know the pitfalls. You know all of it. And if you don't know, connect with Jack or connect with Shiraz or connect with both. So we're out. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.